This video is sponsored by Into the AM. Use my code Kevin Kulix at checkout, you get an additional 10% off, but more on them later. In this video, we talk about cross guard customization and when we could see a day for a new update for it, when Forge Maps will come into Halo Infinite and how will that actually play out. And we'll also talk about whether or not MCC or Halo Infinite is the better deal. If you don't know, we post quite often on this community page on the channel here, guys. So if you guys want to catch these posts, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And this time we did one very specific for you all. I decided to post a QA thread for you guys to respond to and well you guys certainly did quite a lot which of course i absolutely appreciate because these types of videos wouldn't be possible without you guys interacting with the content well, let's get right into those details spartan for jesus asks do we have an exact date on the next cross core update i don't think 343 will actually ever provide an actual date when cross core things will happen i think they're pretty much just assumed whenever there's going to be a major update to the game that some bits of cross core will happen and likely the next big update for cross core customization will come with season three we have some information about this actually which credible leaker sir asia says that cross core equipment partial support is coming within season three or greater some pieces of equipment like torso hip helmet and wrist attachments he also states that not everything is going to be cross core as some items might be specifically for the mark 5 or mark 7 or whatever kind of core that they're looking at but if there's potential for cross core they'll do it as a refresher this is what jerry hook said about doing cross core customization starting with season two and it seems like three for three starting to make the steps towards that true cross core that we're all expecting. And our focus for season two, not from day one, but as we move through season two, is that your visors, your helmets, your coatings, those will be the first things that we go after. And then we'll slowly try to move everything uh, to be more ubiquitous. And it looks like helmets might be coming around the corner relatively soon. With the December winter update, we started seeing bots show up with different helmets. Like this is the Mark 7 helmet on a Mark 5 body. Again, another example, Mark 5 body, Mark 7 helmet. And again, with the Yoroi set with the Mark 7 helmet, it. And we've seen this happen earlier with Halo Infinite that the bots even had ability for cross core customization at all before the players even did. Obviously seeing the bots with the cross core doesn't mean it's happening in season three, but it does seem like there's something within the code of Halo Infinite that they're allowing this to happen. Jerry Hook mentioned this like, Coatings, helmets, and visors are kind of the main priority right now to make cross core. So that's what we're going to be seeing next. And like I've stated multiple times on the channel here, guys, I don't think it's ever going to be a flick of the switch where like one day everything is cross core. It's going to be a gradual process. Jerry Hook also mentioned within that live stream that there might have to go down to like a granular level of individual items to make them cross core compatible, which is very time consuming, but we'll see if it works out. But we can see that 343 are making steps forward to making cross core a reality. And I know waiting for cross core customization to come in can be a pain as you want your Spartan to look awesome, but you don't have to wait too long to make yourself look awesome. Thanks to today's sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM are a team of artists and creators who share a common vision. They see clothing as a canvas to express what drives you. Since 2012, they developed premium apparel that elevates self-expression and provides unparalleled comfort for wherever your passions take you. Into the AM recently sent me some apparel to check out and honestly guys, I'm really enjoying this stuff. I like the art style they put on the shirts and I also got some cool joggers that go with it that fit me really well. If you're not into all the crazy styles, don't worry, they have some simple tees for you as well. They fit great, they feel great, and I genuinely do enjoy their products. If you use my code KevinCollect, you receive an additional 10% off of your purchase. Plus, I get a little kickback and help support the channel as well. Into the AM has been a long time sponsor of the channel, and I genuinely do enjoy their products a lot. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you much Into the AM for sponsoring the video. So let's get right back into those details. Corrupt Demon 11 asks, will more community maps and game modes be progressively added into matchmaking? If so, will it be rotational or permanent? Also, can we expect playable elites sometime maybe through a Halo 2 throwback event? Well, we do know that 343 are trying to put Forge content into matchmaking. They say this at the end of the year live stream. Well, I hope Shore in the future talks about our goal of bringing a uh, matchmaking forge playlist in like we want to take some of the best content it's we gonna bring that in get matchmaking yep. so people can get you know xp for that yeah. tried to get a playlist in before the end of the year you did. absolutely you, we you, had, you did you did i worked as hard as i possibly could to get that going it is not trivial especially if we want to do it in a way that is that that 90 percent level yep. of what i'm talking about yep. like right like we don't want it to be a bad experience but it needs to be the right experience so like we're just gonna wait 
it's coming. It's We're going to have just the Forge floodgates are going to open. We're going to see the custom game browser continue to improve. The new version of Infinite's action sack, whatever that might become. So yeah, Sean Barron, the head of live servers, stated that they really try to get a Forge playlist in before the end of the year. Just time constraints and trying to get maps up to that level of quality that they talked about just wasn't quite enough time. But you also heard Sketch mention about 343's version of action sack, which a 343 dev did comment on on Twitter. Zach Boyce, who is the multiplayer game designer at 343, stated that they have different idea for action sack, particularly when we start getting our hands on wild stuff the community makes with Forge. Which I'm kind of curious exactly what their new take is going to be on action sack. I mean, we've seen 343 do action sack within Halo 5, and it was a pretty fun game mode, utilizing a lot of Forge content, making up those party games and stuff like that that Halo's definitely known for. Now, I wouldn't expect this map playlist to be a permanent thing, though. I think the whole fun of it it's kind of like a new set of things to do within the game. If it's always there, yeah, it would be a good thing to kind of play out some new content, but I think it'd be a little bit more exciting if it was rotational rather than permanent. Each time the playlist comes back, it's a whole new set of maps. Like, that's exciting stuff. If it was permanent and just getting map updates, people would be like, okay, that's kind of cool, I guess. At least that's my impression. And 343 did just this during Halo 5's development that I think we'll see kind of like a rotational set of maps coming back in. I just hope that each time they rotate it back in, maybe like a once a month kind of thing or something, you have a whole new set of maps just to have some new content, something new to happen and play within the game, which has been the biggest issue with Halo Infinite since the launch of the game. And about playable elites, I don't ever see that happening anytime soon. I would not hold your breath. Definitely not happening in 2023 maybe in 2024 if something crazy happens, but I highly doubt that as well. I think people are just really holding on to playable elites as we played the MCC. That was a recent game that happened, but when you think about it, the last time we had playable elites in a game was Halo Reach, like 12 years ago when that game released. And like I've said previously on the channel here, if they're gonna have playable elites, I like to see them play into the differences that elites have compared to Spartans like they did in Reach. A mode like Invasion was incredible to showcase these differences and have a purpose to have an elite rather than just wanting to be a dinosaur in multiplayer. Joe Roland asks, when are you updating your Halo games tier list? Halo Infinite needs to be A tier or higher. Okay, let's kind of speed run this process a little bit here. So I'm gonna go in release order on this game. So CE, I had to put S tier. It was just such a cultural event. Revolutionized shooters on console made them viable actually. So, I mean, for how important this game was for the entire franchise, I mean, it had to be S tier. Halo 2, I do love it. One of my favorite campaigns, great multiplayer, a lot of bugs and weird things that happen with this game. And so that kind of docks down a little bit for me that I honestly would actually have to put an A tier in my opinion right there. Halo 3, if you guys know the channel, I've been watching for a while. I'm a total fanboy of Halo 3. Uh, the campaign's amazing. Forge, multiplayer, community features, just like it was a complete evolution of the Halo franchise. I still find it to be the peak of the franchise. I gotta put that S tier. ODST, uh, the campaign's good. I find the open world pretty dead and boring for the most part. The dedicated missions are fun. The story is pretty good, but I'm not really like huge into it. I kind of actually dread looking, thinking about playing the campaign just because I hate that open world situation because it's so boring. Uh, Firefight's pretty good, but you have to play so much of Firefight in a single session to make it interesting that it was a good starting point, but it didn't really evolve it from there. I'm also gonna put ODC C tier. I'm sorry. I know people love it, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. Reach, I think the campaign gameplay is great. Story is pretty good right there. Multiplayer certainly had its issues. Forge was definitely a great evolution of Halo 3's. Theater mode, firefight, community features, customization was amazing. Not quite S tier. I would have to put this A tier. I love myself some Reach. Now you have Halo 4. I wasn't really too into the story of Halo 4. The whole Chief Cortana thing felt kind of really forced and awkward, really. The multiplayer, I think we can all agree, was uh, definitely the lowest point in Halo's history. Uh, Forge wasn't really that great. Uh, and it was, the customization was great, but the, the uneven starts and everything, dude, it was just, Halo 4 was a complete mess. It just wasn't really a Halo game. To me, it's still one of the best Call of Duty mains games ever made. I'm throwing it in the bad. I'm sorry, I don't know, some people like Halo 4, but that's just me. Halo 5 definitely was a mixed bag. Campaign, worst story we've ever had. Gameplay of it was okay. Uh, the multiplayer I actually really did enjoy. I would still say that it was the best Halo multiplayer since Halo 3, in my opinion. Uh, though there were some issues with like theater mode being kind of wonky, still is because of the 343 style of things. Warzone was a great addition. Sadly enough, Col Call of Duty sold that name. So I would have to put this kind of in a B tier. It's a good game. 
There's some highlights, some lowlights, but overall pretty dang good. Now we're on the Halo Infinite. I absolutely love the campaign in this game. The multiplayer gameplay, we all agree, is great. It's just lacking some features and some server fixes and also the customization and all that kind of stuff. We all know what's going on with Halo Infinite right now. But overall, I think it's a good game. Uh, is it a great Halo game or one of the greatest? Definitely not S tier for where it is at right now. It can contest with A tier, but I think right now, compared to what Halo 2, Halo Reach are, I gotta put this at B tier at the moment. It's good, it has potential, the campaign's amazing, the fundamentals of the multiplayer are great, but it just needs a lot of work. So just leave it in a comment why I messed this entire thing up, why you hate my list. Gibberish Draw asks, what is a better deal MCC or Halo Infinite campaign? I think that question really does come down to preference. I mean, if you look at it objectively, amount of content in MCC compared to the amount of content in Halo Infinite, well, you're getting more bang for your buck with MCC. Though you're playing games that are like 10, 20 plus years old. Because what do you get for just paying into Halo Infinite? It's the campaign, which like I said earlier, the campaign of Halo Infinite is great. A completely fresh new take on the format and I think it plays out super well. Yeah, it could be bigger, but I think what we have, it's really fun. Especially with the addition of co-op campaign, it makes it even better. But you do have more hours of content to play through within the MCC because you have 20 years of game development packed into one game. Plus you can pick it up on sale, often on Steam, or you can also just play through Game Pass. So I would say you do get more bang for your buck with the MCC compared to Halo Infinite for price value and content that's there. Though, Halo Infinite's campaign is really awesome and also you're, since you're buying into the game, I wouldn't expect any kind of expansions that really cost more money. Maybe they will, like a Destiny style thing. We have to wait on that. And also, you can pretty much wait on the campaign because we're not gonna get any kind of DLC for a campaign in Halo Infinite anytime soon. Definitely not in 2023. The SCP man asks, do you think we will see any familiar or new weapons than the Bandit slash DMR? I would say yes, because we've seen hints of this through official content by 343. One weapon I think we could see, for example, would be the M6D, the classic Halo CE magnet returning in Halo Infinite. We've seen it referenced within official content by 343. Here's a previous video I made about that. Though 343 recently just posted up this cosplay guide for Spartan Naomi 101. So when it comes to various segments of the armor sets, they have like nice little descriptions of like how to get them look just right for this. But they also bring up this part right here, which is the sidearm security section, which is very interesting text that they have right here. We'll zoom in on it so you guys can see it better. It says the thigh armor can also be a potential spot to mount a weapon holster, letting you keep your M6D Magnum or MK50 sidekick. And if you look it up on YouTube, we've seen various leaks of weapons that have been found within the game files, things like the classic shotgun, the saw, things like that. But I wouldn't really expect those to come in anytime soon. There's probably a lot of models in there that were just probably more like testing out things, see what works, what doesn't work. So there's still a lot of things that need to be done to get any of those weapons into the game, much less so that hasn't even been created yet. Though I'm sure 343 does have a plan when it comes to bringing old weapons in or even new weapons in. It's just that it depends on what ends up working properly and what 343 can get a good momentum on to finish the whole product. Now, if you wanna know more what happens with Halo Infinite in 2023, check out this video right here. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.